joins us tonight from Mexico City. Professor, thanks for coming on. I, I wonder thanks, if you me. see something inconsistent with someone who teaches at a university dedicated to the idea of the open exchange of ideas, calling for ideas he disagrees with to be shut down. Um, I think we should be clear that universities are actually spaces for rational ideas, for arguments that are based in fact and evidence. And the reality is that Charles Murray has never based his arguments in evidence or facts. He has never passed any kind of rigorous um, academic, you know, academic examination of those ideas. He doesn't publish with academic presses. Instead, he's actually had his research paid for by right-wing think tanks. Uh, they paid for him to write books like The Bell Curve. Hmm. They paid for those books to be published, and then they actually paid for journalists to read and take seminars on those books to spread the gospel, as it were. So this is kind of the worst kind of pseudo-intellectual pay-for-play, and that hmm. doesn't guarantee you an, a platform <coughs> on a university campus. So because he hasn't been published in academic journals and hasn't passed through the gauntlet of other professors assessing his work, though of course he has because he has been an ac ac academic, but by that standard, I don't know, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, none of them I recall publishing in academic journals, is, is their writing also out of bounds on Drexel's campus? So I think the question is really also about the content of these writings. Let's be clear. This is someone who is defined as a white nationalist by the Southern Poverty Law Center, someone who burned, burned crosses in his youth and went on to play a role in violent counterinsurgency during the Vietnam War, and then who went on to support wait, mass wait, wait, incarceration, wait, wait, wait. So, let me, let me, the gutting, just, the so, gutting of sorry. welfare. Okay. Let me, let me just stop you there. Just back up one step. He burned crosses in his youth? I, I, I know Charles yes, Murray. Sir. I know quite a bit about him. I've read his books. I'm sure unlike you. I, I'm not familiar with that. Can you? substantiate that claim? Okay, well, you should have done research. It, it doesn't take much research to realize that this is something that happened. He claimed it wasn't racist, which might be plausible were it not for the fact that he went on to basically make a constant eugenic argument for racial inferiority wait, wait, to the rest of his career. Where did he burn? He burned that black wait, Americans so wait, I'm, and that I'm Latinos sorry. I, I don't want to get hung up. I don't want to get hung up, but since we're having a debate about what is accurate and what is not, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Charles Murray was a member of the Klan? I mean, what you, you can't throw these things out here. I know this is not an academic journal, but substantiate that claim, please. Now, I mean, Tucker, I'm pretty sure you know what Google is, and I'm pretty sure you know how to do research. And if you did that, then you would realize that this is something he's admitted to, although he claimed that it had no racial undertones. Unfortunately, as I said, he went on to write that blacks and Latinos are racially inferior, that they're genetically debased. And he's gone right. on more recently, actually, this might be interesting for your audience, that he's gone on more recently to actually argue that poor whites are becoming genetically inferior as well. This is someone okay. who uses the most flimsy pseudoscience that's been debunked in every way possible, and yet people continue to take it seriously because it makes them feel better. So, so, look, you're saying that someone who makes racially inflammatory claims that haven't been vetted by academic, uh, the academic establishment shouldn't be allowed to speak on a college campus, and yet people have said that of you. You called on Twitter for, and I'm quoting, white genocide, obviously a racially inflammatory thing to say. People tried to shut you down, and you called those people a mob and, and defended academic freedom when it applied to you. Why, how is he more racially inflammatory than you calling for white genocide? It's interesting. I'm really, I'm losing my faith. I'm really losing my faith in your ability to use Twitter. I mean, to use Google, because if you used Google, the first thing you'd realize is that, of course, white genocide is not a real thing. It's a racial fantasy of the kind that Charles Murray and his ilk like to put forward. Um, but and you, you called for these on arguments. Twitter. I'm not saying that no one should be, I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed on campus. I'm saying that they haven't earned any kind of platform on campus and the free speech rights of those who are most affected by that racist okay, hate speech but, comes into play. They're, they're but, but, able but to protest a, as they did look, today. I'm, I'm they protested to today peacefully at Villanova before hey, they were attacked. Nobody takes you seriously. I'm trying to take you seriously. You're accusing this guy of racial demagoguery, and you called for white genocide. You also applauded the Haitian Revolution for killing whites. Look, those are your views. I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to express them. I'm merely pointing out the irony that you're, you're trafficking in race hatred, and yet saying that Charles Murray shouldn't be allowed to speak because he traffics in race hatred. Are it's you self-aware enough to catch that? that? I actually believe, I, I believe in a very fundamental way that all people are equal. What's very interesting and different is that Charles Murray does not, and he's dedicated his life to arguing that people are inferior and that those inferior people should not have access to education, should not have access to social I think he's welfare. argued for genocide. Out One of, of higher education. Okay, right. I, I doubt actually, you've read a Charles he, Murray he book, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. supported but, by... Okay, but answer my question. You called for white genocide, and I'm not making it up. It actually got a lot of attention. 
are you going to defend that as as a principled academic stand? I mean, what does that mean exactly? And what I really, I really, maybe I gave you too much credit. Maybe I thought you were too smart. Maybe I thought that you would actually do your research and figure <laughs> out, for example, what is satire, what's clearly satire, <laughs> okay. what talks about an imaginary concept, an imaginary concept of white genocide, which is uh -huh. upheld by the likes of Steve Bannon and all these alt-right figureheads who actually think that white people in the United States are under existential threat. <laughs> Okay. I do not believe that. Okay. So here's something that you, I mean, I don't even understand the answer, but I'm going to pass on to something you said just a couple days ago, and this is on your Twitter account. You said, some guy gave up his first class seat for a uniformed soldier. People are thanking him. I'm trying not to vomit or yell about Mosul. Was that satire too? What does that mean? Are you going to blame Steve Bannon for that as well? I think it's really irresponsible to blindly support, for example, wars that send off young people uh, into combat, risk their lives, kill many others, as we've just seen in Mosul, 200 people incinerated by U.S. bombs, and, you know, and to not do that in a way that expands anyone's freedom, that makes anyone less secure. The Iraq okay, war but has you're not blaming, protected But you're blaming freedom. the soldier. You're not blaming the policymakers. Oh, you're saying, not. no, no, you're absolutely saying giving not. up a seat for a soldier in uniform made you want to vomit. You're not saying giving up a seat for the guy who made the war policy, but for the soldier, the guy who's risking his life. Why'd that make you feel like throwing up? I think U.S. troops need real support. They don't need symbolic gestures. What they need is not a first-class seat. What they need is health care support, psychological support. Women in uniform need to not be subjected to an epidemic of sexual assault. And more than anything, they don't need to be deployed, have their lives risk, be taken away from their families for wars that do nothing and no good for anyone. But why is it bad to get, okay, that's fine, but why is it bad to give them a first-class seat? I'm missing that. Someone's trying to be nice to the guy who's going through all these hardships you just described, and that makes you mad. Why? I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for generous gestures devoted toward those who most deserve them in our society, and I have the deepest respect for anyone who, particularly for economic reasons, makes difficult decisions, whether it's joining the military, whether it's you know, doing other dangerous work that has to take place in our society, whether it's being an economic migrant. And I think these people all deserve better. They deserve to not have to join the military if they would rather just get an okay, education. Okay, but he, but he, but he did. So he, he doesn't have a government have a subsidized job at a university like you. So returning why that make you mad? to not have the health care and the psychology. Psychological, the psychological support that they need. This is how we support the troops, not by sending them off into wars. Okay. So you began this conversation with reference to your own scholarship and the academic journals that you and your fellow professors publish in. And because I do want to take you seriously, I actually spent some time reading some of them today. And, and I, I just want to, I want you to explain to me what this means. Now, I'm, I was an editor for a long time, not an academic press, but an editor. You wrote this, a piece called Dual Power in the Venezuelan Revolution. This is the second paragraph, and I'm quoting it. By viewing the process through the Leninist concept of dual power, that is the construction of an autonomous alternative power capable of challenge, challenging the existing state structure, we can see that the establishment of communal councils in Venezuela is clearly a positive step to the development of fuller and deeper democracy, which is encouraging in and of itself. Now, that's a sentence with too many Absolutely. adjectives, a passive construction, imprecise language. It's high school writing. It's crap. And I'm wondering, is your scholarship <laughs> serious? I really appreciate I mean, you digging into the vaults. I appreciate you digging into no, the no, vaults I, to actually no, closely I'm read to, some of my You're not writings, an impressive scholar. We're, we're really that's what I'm saying. That. You're a performance artist. That's not you're impressive. That hasn't, that's shown himself <laughs> unable to use Google today. This is really interesting. No, I know I'm serious. Three books what does that mean? I just read. I don't need to flout academic credentials in front of you. But you don't, you're not capable of writing a clear sentence. Now, I went through a lot of different essays that you wrote, and I've got an IQ above room temperature, Good, and I couldn't understand something. any of them because your writing is childlike. It's childlike. This is strange. And I'm it's wondering, as though your entire can you explain today is to show what that, that you're means? Incapable of grasping very simple and very basic things. Okay, I've done so what is what is studies on popular power in Venezuela, on the development of what are called communal councils. I know them better than than most, and I know what it means to develop these participatory institutions of democracy in Venezuela. I'm glad to talk about them, but if your entire shtick is to come on here and say that you can't understand basic English and basic sentences, oh, no, no, I'm really no, no, not no, sure no. where to start. But it's there. not it's not basic English. I, I've spent a lot of time writing and editing basic English, and it's designed to make the idea clearer, not to cloak them from people. So two things are going on. Either you don't really know what you're saying because you don't understand it yourself, or you're trying to hide it from the person for whom you're writing. 
and neither one is impressive. And I guess my my point mm -hmm. is, my point is, the only writing I have read by you that I can understand clearly are your tweets, and they seem to be designed to shock people, to get attention. It seems again a species of performance art, not scholarship. Has this occurred to you? I mean, performance art is performance art is scholarship. Let's be real about that. But y you seem to be able to understand the very short pieces that I write, and yet when you sit down to try to read the longer things, you, you suddenly want to perform your own inability to actually read and to digest. Plenty of people have read my work; they appreciate it. And yet you're here defending someone like Charles Murray, who very few people defend. Who is a well, pseudo scientific racist? I'm not defending Charles Murray. I'm, I'm defending. No, no. Well, I'm defending. What are we here I'm talking defending. About them? We're here talking I'm, about. I'm, I'm defending his right to say what he thinks. And I think that underpins sure, not, yeah. all scholarship, is the mm -hmm. right of people to say what they believe. We call it free speech. It's enshrined in the Bill of Rights, right. in the First Amendment to that bill. So I'm just surprised that you're right. not for that, but then I guess I shouldn't be, because you defend Hugo Chavez. But let me just ask you one final question. If your tweet... Now, at no point in the First Amendment does it say that no one should use their free speech to protest. And I think you know that perfectly well. No, no, but and it's so not a question no of protesting. Does it say it's... that free speech should not be loud, it should not be disruptive, no. it should not be unruly. These are things no, that have a long and venerated I'm, tradition in the United States. And I'm this not against protest, speech. as this you know. Free speech, free speech You're is very protesting, different. You're not protesting, Professor. You're trying to prevent a man. You're trying to prevent an academic platform. Silly. You're trying to prevent him from money saying from what he thinks. Uh, think tanks. Okay. Last question. You're, the, the tweet that you're unwilling to defend about feeling nauseous as you see a man in uniform getting a first class seat, you protected that. You prevented the public from seeing that right after you tweeted it. If you're proud of what you think and you can defend what you think, why did you do that? I believe absolutely in, in the right of people to use these platforms. I believe in the right of Charles Murray, of course, to take to Twitter and to say, you know, his dispute is kind of violent racism. Um, but that doesn't mean that he should be invited onto a university no, campus no, to do I'm, so. I'm it sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have a lot of time. I just want you to answer my question. Those people what, that why he says are inferior, those people that he says are inferior have every right to protest to him, okay. to take to the streets, okay. to demand that he but, not be able to speak. But you're not answering questioning my question. Their as human you're being. going on racism, racism. They're inferior. Okay. Yes. I well, got it. It's racism. Are you going to answer my question? If Charles Murray is a racist, why are you protecting your Twitter feed if you can defend your position? Why are you hiding it from the public? Sometimes you need to protect your Twitter feed when people who like to go on and on about free speech decide that it's time to violently threaten people who are using that free speech. I would not violently <laughs> threaten a Charles Murray. Says the man who called for white racist. genocide. <laughs> and yet, and yet, and you yet, don't need to major you know, in irony. I can see, to have any professor. Right to go right. speak at Villanova, I gotta which is go. absolutely absurd. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have fun in Mexico City. Well, for more...